Okay, to begin, it's Robert, how do you spell your last name? S-T-U-T-M-A-N. And your title? Special Agent in Charge of the Drug Enforcement Administration for New York. Hearing a lot, first I want to start off, hearing a lot about crack and all these reports, are, are they overblown? Are they exaggerated? Is this as much of a problem as, as we're being led to believe? It's an interesting question. I got transferred here six months ago, and one of the first briefings I got from my staff in New York was on crack. And my original conception, I remember it very clearly, was this is a fad that may be being overblown. I have completely turned around in the past six months. I think it has very closely, is very close to becoming the drug of choice in New York, but I think more importantly, because of the reasons it has become the drug of choice in New York, I think we are in a position of very closely, very in the near future, it is going to become one of the drugs of choice in the United States. Did that kill you? Yeah, or that again? No, you coming in the door killed us. All right, once again, are these reports overblown? When I first got here six months ago, I got a briefing on crack. My original estimate was this may be a fad that is being overblown. Uh, since then, I have completely changed my mind. It is a drug that has almost taken over New York as the drug of choice, and I think the reasons that it has taken over New York are valid in the rest of the country. My personal estimate is we will, in the near future, see crack becoming one of the drugs of choice in the United States. How long have you been an agent, and, and does anything compare to what you've seen? I've been a federal drug agent for 21 years, and I have never seen a drug phenomenon like this uh, anywhere. What do you mean? Uh, I have never seen a drug so quickly become popular in across the board socioeconomic groups. This is a drug that started uh, in the ghettos of Harlem, is now widely accepted in the poorest as well as the richest communities. We see kids from the most, most wealthy suburbs using it. We see kids from the poorest ghetto using it. Um, we jokingly in our office say it's a drug that started on 145th Street and went to 42nd Street in three months. And three months after that, it went from 42nd Street to the entire Northeast. Do we have any idea as to numbers, the numbers of people who are using it? I have seen estimates that probably the majority or more than 50 percent of cocaine users now prefer crack as the form of cocaine that they want to use, which is an amazing number because literally nine months ago almost nobody in New York heard of crack. And now here we're saying that better than half of the cocaine users in this state are using crack as the preferred form of cocaine. Is it big business? It's a tremendous business. It's a very profit-making business. You can buy a pound of cocaine on the street and with a fairly easy uh, process transform it into crack and you will increase your profits roughly by 250 percent. It presents an interesting enforcement problem for us in the Drug Enforcement Administration because our basic philosophy is to go after the largest organizations that are responsible for drugs in a particular area. The problem with crack that we have is there are no major organizations or very few major organizations responsible. What you've got is hundreds and thousands of mid-level dope peddlers who are simply buying cocaine and transforming it into crack. So it disperses the head of the uh, python, if you will, and it makes it more difficult for us to go after it. So what do you, but these are new, this new anti-crack unit, the New York Police Department, is that going to make any difference? I, I think uh, the commissioner made an excellent decision. Uh, clearly, it is a, a problem that's going to be dealt with at all levels, from the streets up. We are dealing very, we are working very closely with the police department on the mid and high level traffickers. Uh, but I think the situation on the streets of New York has to be dealt with very quickly. In dollar terms, I mean, how large are we talking about? How many dollars are changing hands in New York every day? Uh, uh, crack? Any estimates? Uh, my guess would be probably millions. Uh, we're talking about the drug that is responsible for the largest single dollar value in the United States, cocaine in general, and crack in New York has become the preferred form of cocaine. Uh, it's an amazing phenomenon to see what's happened. Three months ago, you could only buy crack in two or three areas in this city. Today, in 90 days, you can buy it in almost any neighborhood in this city. Any explanation for that? Just the popularity. Uh, it, it's, it's just increased so much. The profit making, the popularity, and our dope peddlers are very bright. When they see a profit, they immediately get into the business. Uh, we have a drug that, as you know, is many experts consider almost instantly addicting. It's very cheap when you first buy it. Uh, the high comes immediately within five to ten seconds, and the high is extremely intense for about eight to twelve minutes. 
when you have all of those phenomena put together, you have a very attractive substance. Unfortunately, it's also a deadly substance. How is this drug, though, affecting other parts of society in terms of crime? I mean, there, uh, people are alluding to the fact that crime is up as a result of crack. I mean, can we prove that? Well, we can't yet because uh, it's too early to do any ep epidemiological survey. So the phenomena is too new. Uh, I think the anecdotal stories that you hear, uh, I know the police commissioner has pointed out a couple of instances, uh, I think they're basically accurate. We find crack users being extremely violent, not when they're high on the drug, but when they are off the drug and trying to get more of it. Uh, we find them extremely violent. So I think when a surveys are done, it in fact will show a very high level of violent crime associated with crack. If I'm sitting in Kansas City, or Midwest, should I be at all concerned that crack finally comes to New York? Is it going to affect me? Is it Absolutely. It is, it's going to come to, I believe, it is going to come to every town in the country where there is any drug use at all. One of the deadliest problems we find on the drug scene in the United States of America is too many people thinking it can't happen to their kids, not my kid. Well, this is a drug that can happen to all kids. As I said, we see the richest to the poorest in New York using it. The kids in New York out in the suburbs are no different than the kids in the suburbs in Cleveland, in Houston, or in Denver. And we have seen it in Denver and in Dallas and the nicer, smaller towns across the country. Uh, the reasons for the phenomena in New York are just as valid in the rest of the country. And once again, those reasons are? Uh, you have an extremely cheap drug, at least in the beginning, 10 to $20. Almost anybody can afford it. Uh, the high comes within five to ten seconds. It's an extremely intense high, and most importantly, it is addicting within a matter of weeks, very often within a matter of days. Getting back to what you can do about it, though, I mean, as you point out yourself, there, there's so many people <coughs> in the business. Yeah. Once again, there, there, there's so many people in the business. Mm -hmm. how, can you, how can you expect to make a dent in this? Well, law enforcement can make it less available. We will never make it unavailable. I think what has to truly be done is a major, massive education program on drugs in general, certainly on crack, so that people know what they're dealing with. You asked me a question in the very beginning of our interview if I thought it was being overblown generally by the media. Uh, for a while, I almost thought that, that there were too many stories on crack until about two weeks ago here in New York there were constant stories in the papers and I gave a speech in Long Island to a large group of parents almost none of the parents had heard of crack in the middle of all this media hype that immediately changed my mind we are not doing enough talking about this particular problem parents have very little idea what's be, what's happening on the subject and unfortunately kids don't know what they're dealing with kids believe myths they believe cocaine is harmless, they believe it's non-addicting, and that's one of the big problems we have to deal with. But are we talking about cocaine or crack? I mean, people... Cocaine is addicting. Cocaine is addicting on its own. Here we are talking about a substance that is five to ten times as strong as cocaine. Uh, and if anybody doesn't realize the situation, there certainly has been enough published about it. But unfortunately, I guess people aren't reading it because it's growing tremendously. At that point again, it's addicting. I mean, how, how it compares to cocaine and, and how much more of a problem it is? Crack is five to ten times more, uh, more stronger than cocaine. Most therapists that I know and respect in this field will tell you that crack is the single most addicting drug available today in the United States. Far more addicting than heroin. That's a statement that five years ago, if I had made, people would look at me like I was crazy. Today we have a substance that most of us agree, who have seen what it's done, is much more addicting than heroin and yet heroin is the drug that is feared in middle America as my god that's the stuff that dope addicts use and yet they don't say that about crack and it's happening with crack far more frequently than heroin yeah, I have two questions. you can answer John uh, how is something so pure and so strong and still so cheap do you, have, do you know? Yeah, it's, it's, just a, it's just a quirk of the method that it's made. Uh, first of all, the myth that it is so pure on the street is somewhat of a myth. It is slightly stronger than the cocaine that you purchase to make into crack. Uh, but what really makes it, gives it the kick, what makes it five to ten times stronger is not necessarily the purity of the drug, it's the method of ingestion. In other words, by smoking it, it gets into the brain that much quicker 
and that w without losing as much as by inhaling it through through the nostrils. Um, it is cheap, but not when you compare it on a minute by minute basis. In other words, you're paying ten to twenty dollars for an eight to twelve minute high. So when you compare the cost for a high per minute, it is in fact not that cheap. It's cheap in the method that it's sold, not for the length of time that it keeps you high. For instance, if you inhale cocaine, it might keep you high for an hour or better. So while you'd be paying more money for the cocaine, you'd stay high a heck of a lot longer. And last question. You just came from a SAC conference in New Orleans. How much time was devoted to crack? Uh, we discussed crack. It, frankly, it's interesting. It was so new, it wasn't even on the agenda, but we discussed it in, in great detail, and it was decided that we're going to have a, uh, a national meeting on crack very shortly. Uh, to discuss the issue. I talked to my compatriots uh, in Dallas, in Denver, in Boston, uh, in Houston, and they are seeing crack across the country, and they are asking New York for information on how to deal with it. Thank you. Yes, please. He's a good guy. Um, I spent a lot of time talking to him. And uh, so, um, as David may, may have explained to you, this may go tonight, it may go next week. One, one of the things, that, though, as soon as we, we finish with this, is um, if we can get the, um, some shots of, of crack, you know, what we're talking about, and, and, and any paraphernalia. I think we've got it. Uh, Bob, have we got the crack? Yes, I'm so far, we've talked to Ellen Morehouse. Are you familiar? No, I don't know. I, I've yeah. Ellen, Ellen Morehouse is supervisor of counselors at um, Westchester okay. High Schools, and she did a survey, um, an informal survey, and she found, as I mentioned before, in some schools, and th this is where we have to be careful that we don't, we're not misleading, but that in some schools, 1% of the student population had I, I said this to our agents in charge yesterday. I think six months from now, we will be having national meetings on crack, because I believe it will be the national drug of choice in every city across the country. Um, I think it's the marijuana of the 80s. Not comparing problems with it, but the phenomena, the social phenomena. That I've never seen anything like it. Um, six, mo six months ago when I first heard about it, it was strictly a black problem in Harlem and a Hispanic problem in Washington Heights. Period. And within matters of days, you saw the whole socio-economic scene change. You could literally watch a change daily. Uh, it's like a microcosm of. You're getting power surges on that line. Yeah? Is the building going? <laughs> but the kids are coming into the city, or what? Yes, yes. And of course, what's happening? Of course, you get some bright kids that'll come in and buy three, four hundred dollars worth and go back to their schools, and they become the dope peddlers in the school system. And that's exactly what happens.
I can't feel it, I'm getting hot.
I don't see anybody in front of me. Oh yeah, he's getting closer. Thing, but at least not harsh. Fuck it, let's hop the hell out. You wanna go out? Let me get the mic first out. Give me your cable, John. Take it out. Mackenna. 
There's only one way out to this canyon, but... Anybody getting this? This guy is out of it. Huh? I, he said his, this guy is out of it. That's all I could hear. I mean, that's all he said. Yeah, it's slotted up. Slotted up. Go ahead, go ahead. Just keep walking around. Okay, yeah, I guess we gotta keep walking, walk, you know, going around. That's what he said. What about you? Maybe somebody will approach him. Oh, here it is. Turn it off. 
I'm walking in. Walking in. Yeah. How much? Just talk to me now. Have a gram, gram, whatever you want. You can grab one. All right. You can sample those right after you guys say, let's sit down. No, man, I don't get that kind of cash. <laughs> No, I'm looking for something just to get me high for half hour. I'm looking to have cash, but... You want to hang out? You going to be here? I'm going to be around there. I'm waiting for him. You cool? No, man, I got nervous. There's a cop at the corner. Ah. Oh, wait. They're going to come with cash. You're going to be around there. How you doing, my man? Cool. How you doing? Nah, I don't think. I hope you guys can see me. Flash the lights if it's okay, if I'm not too far. Did you flash the lights right now? No, not Okay, right now. Got it. That's it. That's it. There's all sorts of shit going on behind me, but it might be too dark. Once you slide it across the street, move up a little bit, and I'll head back in here a little bit. Akram. Yeah. Move forward, almost behind the school bus. He, head up this way. He wants to move forward behind the school bus and he's heading that way. Okay, John? Hmm? No. Acker, move up behind the school bus. You still want us to move behind in. the school bus? That's the maybe, he, maybe he got something. Maybe. 